Welcome back to the Here, There and Everywhere channel where this week is a great British bank holiday which is just another excuse for Prince Andrew to get the kids out of school for another day but we're out to make the most of it I've got three quarters of fuel in the tank and fuck all in the bank so let's see what we can do with a fine weekend ahead Fuck off, you're not. Literally, we're just driving around in Wales. We was just gonna find somewhere and park up at night, but we'll come to you if you're in Wales. So as you know, we're heading into Wales and Danny's just fucking called me and said, oh, I've just checked your live location on Snapchat. You're five minutes away from me and look who's here. What a crazy turn of events. Can't not spend a weekend without him, can I? From a stranger to me fucking best mate, I see him every weekend. Well, we've arrived. This is where we're staying for tonight. Danny's got his tent box all set up. First plan of action is to just go on a nice little walk down to the beach. I think Snoop needs to stretch his legs and so do I, to be honest with you. But yeah, I'm gonna head down to the beach. I'll pick you back up later on when we're ready to set camp up round here and cook some food. So we're setting up camp and first thing we've done he set the projector up on the roof tent so that we can watch some movies later and this leads nicely into what I bought from Tesco before. I bought an air couch so I'm going to blow that up now and see what it's like. Oh, this is fucking cushed it. Best 40 quid I've ever spent this. Not bad. Let's get the projector up, shall we? <laughs> what a chair was that? <laughs> so we're kicking back on the Tesco couch, which is sick. It's even got little beer holders here, like. Oh, here comes class. And we're watching Elvis on the projector. You can take it pretty much anywhere as long as the sun's not out. Such a great investment that, I'm glad I bought it. So I'll kick back and catch you in the morning. Good morning guys. So we're starting today off bright and early. It's seven o'clock in the morning. And the reason we're doing that is we want to get the boat straight out. So what we're going to do is we're going to head down to the bottom of the beach get the boats inflated, get them in the water, and then take the rods out and see what we can try and catch. Because ideally, I've been trying to make one of those catch and cook videos, but I'm not very good at catching something when I say it, as you know from previous pike fishing videos. So I'm not gonna set it in stone, but if none of that happens, we've still got sea caves to go to. We're still gonna be taking the boats out on the sea, which are some of the harshest conditions we'll have seen yet. Let's get down to the beach. So it's time to go into one of the sea caves. This is Danny's expertise, this. Danny's taking us on a little boat trip. You don't even have to pay for tours these days. Just find random in car parks. These rocks will, if you fucking grind against them, pop your boat in it or the barnacles, so just be warned. Don't fill in with much open. So I'm drinking the water. Hi. No. I just realised what he was doing. I'm telling you, you'll regret it later. Huh? Boats are all tied up. Time to go for a little fish in this cave. So we're hopefully going to catch some fish and then be able to cook it for tonight's catch and cook. Honestly, I didn't know what a puffin was until five minutes ago when Danny told me what one was, but I'm really interested in going seeing them. So we're creeping over. That's why the engine's on as low as it can be and we're gonna go see what looks like a very big population of puffins. If he doesn't scare them away. <laughs> yeah, if Snoop doesn't, oh no! It's my fault, this. I'm sorry. Oh, we're scaring them. They're all leaving. Go on, you film the puffins now, it's more interesting than me. Welcome to Here, There and Everywhere, the new David Attenborough of Curzon. Fuck this shit, I'm out. So the puffins are the ones with the red beaks, you've got to look out for them. 
I come with a peace offering. Ah! <laughs> On this week's episode of Heather and Attenborough. Oh, From being out on the boats and I've got a little surprise in this bag here so come over to this little chart with me here is what we've got so we've managed to get ourselves a crawfish for tonight so this is actually under regulation it's the right size we can cook this tonight so we're gonna leave him in here we're gonna head to the new camp spot which is the logging road and then we'll boil him up, cook him, and see what it's like to catch your own food. We're at the second location for night number two, and this is what we call Log Road. And the reason we call it Log Road is because, have a look, it's literally where they come to chop down trees. So there is firewood absolutely everywhere. And if you just seen then, it's an awfully gravelly and just messy road. So look at the state of the van. Bosh, you know what to do, read it. Right, let's see if our little friend survived the journey. Hey, he's still alive. So that, is what we're having for tea tonight. That is what you call the pinnacle of freshness. As the Tesco Morrisons can't beat it. You sat in there for weeks. This caught less than two hours ago. Let's get the fire set up. Now stick it in, leave it for 10 minutes, come back, put it in a pan with this lovely garlic lure pack that we've got and hopefully it should be nice and salty and garlicky and crispy. But first, we need to uh, get it in the pan. It's still twitching. Oh, we had that. The crawfish is in the pot, 10 minutes on the timer, check back in in 10. So the 10 minute timer is up, the crawfish should be ready. Time to whack this over here for now. And in the meantime, we need to get the pan nice and warm with the garlic lure packing. 
Oh fuck. There we go. Get these out whilst we wait. Wow, it's mad that it goes red. So oh, fucking crazy. Let me show you that. Put him in that, put him in that up. So we got the crawfish in the pan, cooking away. Couple more minutes and it should be done. And that should be done. So it's been in the pan for about five or six minutes. Just letting that butter soak in. Let's turn this off. And let's get them onto the board. Oh, they look lovely. Whoa, me crab legs on the floor. Yeah, give it a second oh, to pull on, on the inside there is all good. Time to try the hand caught crawfish. So it's a bit rude of me to not give Danny first pickings considering he actually caught this thing. But he said I can have honours and first dibs because he's already tried it. So what should we go for first, the oh, tail? Yeah. No way that's free. Do you know what I mean? There's no way that's free. Oh, too long. I thought you was going to say it was shit. Bro. Nah, there's no way that's free. How? It's actually really nice, isn't it? Like, I've paid for shit like this, and this was for free, man. This was caught by Danny in a fucking, in the sea in Wales. How? How? I want to go back for more. Let everyone else try this. If you like this and you want to see me try and catch more things and cook them, let me know and I might make a little series out of it. So let me know in the comment section down below if you want me to do more stuff like this. We could go and get sea bass a lot. Can't believe I'm eating some of the nicest seafood I've had for free. There's just nothing better than getting something for free. Right, well, that's all for the Catch and Cook episode. I hope you guys have enjoyed. If you have and you want to see more stuff like this, you could see me going out and catching a sea bass one weekend or doing a little bit of hunting. Let me know down in the comments section below. Let me know what you'd like to see. I could maybe make a series out of Catch and Cook. And I'll see you next Monday. Take care, guys.